Jeff. Okay, there's a countdown. <laughs> okay, I think we're live. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm not so sure if this is actually live or not, but there is, there seems to be a little live, but yeah, I think this is live. Hey, everyone, this is Deb, as usual, and I'm here with Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. So we're here to talk to you today about creating your own catalog, and this is a bit, um, it's kind of like the part three of a, of a video series that I've done over the last couple of weeks, where we talked about getting ready for Christmas. Um... And the first video was all about getting ready in your online store and actually, you know, prepping your online shop for the holiday season. And then this week, I also gave you a timeline for getting ready to sell your work to stores. And a big part of that was actually focusing your month of September, at, you know, developing a, a beautiful catalog because that's an essential piece of the puzzle when it comes to selling to stores. And so Claire is here with us today to um, talk to us through the five steps that are going to make your first wholesale catalog um, a real success and a money spinner. Claire, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure um, most people will remember you from um, the Makers Bees um, Summit. Sorry, it's 7 a.m. So I'm still looking. Like my words aren't coming that easily. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, in, for people who don't know you, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Yeah. Yes. So I'm Claire Yule. I am an indie retailer. I have a shop called Mary and Bright. I'm in Scotland, in case you can't tell from my accent. Um, so we sell um, work by all sorts of um, handmade uh, artists, so entrepreneurs, creative people. Um, and we opened our shop, we're actually eight years old this week, it's our birthday. Um, and very soon after we opened, we started getting loads and loads of submissions from uh, people around the UK and around the world in many cases, who wanted us to stock their products. And the quality of most of those submissions, so that's, you know, when the people write to us, they send us an email, they send us a catalog, the quality of those submissions in, in most cases was very poor. And yeah. I'm, also, I'm also an actor. I, I'm a creative person myself. So I was like, that's not what creative people are like in my experience. I was getting all these really kind of um, stiff, boring, pushy, sometimes over familiar, um, just, just emails that just didn't represent the creative people that I know. So it yeah. was clear that something weird was happening. And I kind of after a while, I figured out it was fear. People are, are frightened to pitch their work to shopkeepers. So I wanted to do something about that. So um, I, I invented Indie Retail Academies. That's where I teach creative people how to sell their work to uh, retailers like me and take some of that fear away and make it an easy, even a fun process. Yeah, that's a big part of it, isn't it? It's, you know, reaching out to store and like a piece of your soul that you've created and, and it's, yeah, it's it's really scary for most people, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, and actually, guys, I'm seeing a few comments popping up. So hi, Larry. Uh, and also, I want to let you know, there's a URL that you can see at the bottom of the screen in that little purple pink box. Um, and that's the actual, uh, an actual PDF that um, Claire made for you. So if you want to go to tzik.co slash five steps, um, you can go and download it for free. You don't even need to put your email or anything. You can just grab the file um, so that you can come back to it later. Or if you want to follow along the presentation, that's the best way to do it. Um, and so I think what we're going to do is um, just jump in, really, and talk to you about how to make um, a really, really beautiful catalog that's actually going to sell your work to store by itself, <laughs> as long as you send it. <laughs> And, um, and then we'll come back to um, the comments and answer a few questions. So if you have questions that come to mind while we're chatting, uh, please write them in the, in the comment below the video because I can see them. And then at the end of the video, we'll go and have a look at um, if there was any question at all. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go in the slides and Claire, I'm ready to start when, um, when you are. Oh, fire away. <laughs> so in our first slide, um, uh, the next one after this title one, um, you can see this is a kind of um, a mock up of a catalog. What's a wholesale catalog? I thought we could just start out, make sure we're all on the same page by talking about what we're actually aiming at. So a wholesale catalog is 
uh, a brochure or a booklet or a leaflet, or these days a PDF, um, that showcases your products. So it um, it shows pictures of them. It's it's got you know text about them, all sorts of different uh, aspects that the retailer needs to know. Um, it's specifically for retailers, so it's not something that you send out to your ordinary customers or to journalists or anything like that. It's specifically for trade buyers. And as well as showcasing your products, it also showcases you as a supplier. So this is something that not it's quite often um, people who are new to wholesale, they don't completely grab straight away. It's not just about the product. A lot of the time we will see submissions from artists and the product itself is amazing. But the, the stuff around that product, so um, the feeling that we get from that supplier in their catalogue, the way they write about it, the kind of pictures they've taken, it kind of makes us feel a little bit like this is too much of a risk. The product itself might be good, but I don't feel in safe hands with you. So we'll talk a, a more about how to make uh, retailers feel like they are in safe hands as we go along. But that idea of it being about showcasing you as a supplier, your ability to work with a, a store, that's something that's really important to kind of grab onto. Um, so the bottom line, though, is that uh, a wholesale catalogue, it provides everything that a retailer needs to know to make a decision about stocking your work. That's kind of like yeah. the sort of main message there. So if we move on to the next slide, um, we'll talk about the first step. So the, the first step in the process of putting together a really good wholesale catalogue is choosing your format. And that can go in two directions, depending on uh, where you are in the process and, and what your goals are. So the, the two formats are either printed or digital. Now, I don't know if you have in Australia or other people around the world, you probably have some catalogue companies that, you know, big retailers that sell via catalogues, things like um, IKEA, um, in the UK, we've got Argos, um, Anthropology, and the, another big UK one is the Bowdoin catalogue. So if you're familiar with those at all, you'll know what a printed catalogue looks like. It's kind of like a little booklet comes through the mail and it can be a huge thing or it can be just a, quite a small thing. So that, that kind of physical object, the, the printed uh, format, is good for um, in lots of ways. It's uh, it's maybe kind of less easy to kind of ignore than a, a, an email one. It's because it's a physical reminder. It can actually sit on the retailer's desk, or we can put it in a folder, um, and it, and it's a kind of permanent reminder of who you are and what you do. And it, and sometimes. You, artists often think, well, if I send an email pitch, then maybe it'll just get buried in their inbox. And with a printed one, that's not so likely to happen. Um, the downsides with a printed catalogue, though, are how expensive it is. I mean, getting even a, a, a simple printed catalogue made can be really, really pricey. And it's also inflexible. Um, if you are halfway through the season and or halfway through the year even and you come up with a new product and you've already got your printed catalogue made, it's not super easy to put that new product into your printed catalogue. You, you essentially need to go away and get a whole new print run and you know pay for all of that. So it's kind of inflexible. It is traditional though, and some retailers really love uh, receiving pitches that way. And so, you know, it's definitely worth considering. Uh, the other place that is good uh, is if you are exhibiting at a trade show. If you are showing your stuff at a show, then you absolutely need to have something for interested buyers to take away with them, something that reminds them of who you are and what they saw. So that doesn't mean that it needs to be a really fancy catalogue, you know, a big full colour, glossy extravaganza, but you do need something or other physical. Um, so that's a kind of quick rundown of the pros and cons of printed catalogues. Let's quickly talk about digital catalogues. So this is just a PDF. You know, it sounds like something complicated. It's not. It's just a simple PDF that you can email to a store. Um, the upsides are that it's really fast. It's really convenient, both for you and the store. Um, a lot of retailers now do love to get submissions by email. That's kind of the preferred way now. It's overtaken post. So that's really you know convenient. Um, it's free to make changes. So if you have a basic familiarity with um, uh, computers and you kind of you know, 
things. You've got a computer and it's easy and free for you to change things. So if something does, you make a new uh, product, super easy to put that into your catalogue and you can do that straight away. There's no waiting around. Um, but it, it's true that some buyers do still prefer printed catalogues and it's not so convenient if you're exhibiting at a trade show. Um, although there are ways around that, you know, if you've got a, digit a digital catalogue and you are at a show, then you can uh, give buyers a really small, like little, just a, you know, really slimmed down, even a piece of paper or a little tiny leaflet that's got the link to your digital catalogue along the top. So there are ways around it. But those are kind of the pros and cons. It's kind of a balancing act. If you're just starting out in wholesale, digital is probably the way to go. It's easiest. It's the cheapest. It's the fastest. It allows you to get moving. And as time goes on, you may decide to, you know, to invest in a print run. So does that sound, does that sound good just now? Is that fairly clear? So yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's, shall we talk about step two then? Um, yeah, let's go into step two. This is where you decide on the imagery in your catalogue, the um, the types of photograph that you're going to include. And those it kind of boils down to two main types, uh, which are white box photos and lifestyle photos. Now, you can see on my little slide there that I've, I've invented this poster, this shine poster. Um, the one on the left hand side against a white background, that's a white box photo is exactly what it sounds like. Um, so this is a shot of your product against, a, it doesn't actually have to be a white background, but a neutral background, something plain. So sometimes people use wood or, um, you know, uh, some, some kind of really kind of natural surface or concrete, something that's, you know, repeatable, but quite plain and allows your product to really stand out. So those types of product, uh, photographs are factual. They show the retailer exactly what they're what we're buying, and that's really important. But they don't do a lot of storytelling. They're telling us what we're buying, but they're not really telling us a lot about why we should buy it. Why we should we buy your particular product and not someone else's? You know, not one of your competitors. And this is where storytelling comes in, and that's uh, the job of lifestyle photos. So this other example that I've got in my slide here, that's a really simple example of a lifestyle shot that's got, it's got a few props in, the, the poster looks like it's in a real room, you know, it's got a few little um, bits and pieces are along the bottom that kind of give a, uh, an idea of what the product might look like in the customer's house. And when a retailer sees that, then we can kind of go, all oh, right, well, I recognize that type of room. I recognize that sort of, you know, that sort of style. And therefore, um, I know immediately whether that fits with my customer or not. It just allows us to, um, to see your work in context, in context and it brings it alive. You know, it makes it, instead of a kind of theoretical thing floating against a, a white background, it becomes something kind of real. That's really good for you in lots of ways. So, uh, so yeah, so these are the, the two types of shop. Um, so, oh, we've got a question here from Kaylee. What percentage of photos should be lifestyle? Should I talk about that now or shall we keep that to uh, the end? Yeah, maybe why not? If we have questions coming in as we're talking about a specific yes. step, sorry, maybe it's easier to do it this way. Just do it right now. So, um, if you're just starting out, now that it's kind of two things. If, you, if you're naturally very good at taking pictures and you find it super easy, and you've got like loads of props and it's not a big deal to you and you you know you're quite practiced at taking lifestyle shots and quite a lot of people are now because of things like instagram then you can do a kind of um a sort of 50 50 or uh even a, a sort of 60 40 balance in favor of lifestyle um if you are not if that's not you at all and you're like you know oh I, I, i'm not really on speaking terms with my camera then you can actually just keep to white box shots because that's the baseline so even if you uh, in your first catalog you only really have white box shots that's not ideal that's not you know it's not as persuasive as it could be but it's also not the end of the world so it kind of depends where you are, but I would say the ideal balance in the most persuasive catalog on the planet would be something like 70-30 in favour of lifestyle. Because the lifestyle pictures, they draw us in, they get retailers into, into your world and into your customer's world. They, they show how your product makes people happy. And that allows us to kind of dream a little bit and it engages our emotions and all purchases, even business decisions like, you know, what to buy for my shop, 
are driven by emotion. So if you can make me feel something, then that makes your catalog immediately more persuasive. So I hope that answers your question a little bit, Kaylee. Um, so we we'll talked a little bit about those two different types. There are some other jobs that, that photos do in your catalog though. So if we skip on to the next slide. Um, so this is where branding comes in. Um, as well as showing your uh, products to the retailer, um, your photos also say something about who you are as a brand. And uh, that really boils down to how safe does it feel to buy from you? Um, so like we, we kind of touched on at the beginning there, um, pictures have, a, have sort of branding implications. And if your pictures are blurry, like I've got a, a sort of mock-up of a really two very bad pictures that I have personally taken with my camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to do it right. It just didn't work out. So uh, I know how hard it can be. But, you know, this is this ring is like super blurry and that necklace is really dark and it just ugh. and, you know, there's some other problems going on there with for formatting and so on. But if you put pictures like that in your catalogue, then even if you are trying to transmit a message of my product is high quality. You know, I make so, and I I think that's the case for for creative entrepreneurs. None of us want to make something that isn't good, that's shoddy or subpar, or you know, that's just we don't do that kind of thing. We're not interested in that. So even if your product is of the highest quality, if you if you put less than like superb quality pictures in your catalog, then you're kind of you're, you're increasing the, the retailer's perception of risk. It just doesn't feel like you really understand what high quality means. And it makes me doubt your ability to deliver it to me, both in terms of the product and in terms of the overall service that I'll get from you. Because it's worth remembering that retailers are looking for partners. We're not just in it for like a sort of one-time deal. We want to find suppliers that we can buy from again and again and again. I mean, we've got suppliers, that it's our birthday this week, we're eight years old. So we've got suppliers that have been with us for eight years, you know, and we still love them and we still buy from them. That's what retailers are looking for. So, uh, you know, that safety thing, that feeling of, is it safe to buy from you is really, really important. And visual things like photos, like the design of your catalog, they are transmitting that information as mm. well as showing the product itself. So let's look at a, like a, a good example if we skip on. Um, here's an, uh, another couple of pages from a catalog. And this time we've got bright, clear pictures um, the, we've got both a white box and a lifestyle picture there. So the lifestyle is the one with the model. It's actually on a person. It's showing me, um, you know, the length of the necklace, where it sits on the body, on the neckline. That's important. But there's also, there's other messages happening in there. The quality of the of the photograph, the way it's been edited, the way it's been lit, the, you know, the, the clothes that the model is in, all of that is saying, this is high quality. And that's backed up by the white box pictures on the other side here, these, these little necklaces that are isolated against the white background. Um, that's completely backed up because those are, you know, absolutely cleanly edited. There's no kind of weird marks or in it you know it's all bright and clean and true to life so th these two pages are saying it's safe you can relax you know to retailers it's okay Claire you're you're going to be in safe hands if you um if you buy my stuff I'm going to look after you I know what high quality means I you know I am offering the best in the business here in terms of service in terms of branding really um so that's the kind of the the other message that your photographs um, uh, give out as well as showing the product themselves. And that's something that not all um, people who are new to wholesale get straight away. But if you do, if you absor uh, absorb that message about the branding implications of your um, your photographs right from the start, you will really stand out from the crowd yeah, because that absolutely. is not going. Yeah. And that's really something, you know, that's it, it's exactly the same online. I mean, your pictures and your photography, it's really not, we know it's not easy. Um, as you were saying, you know, you, you think you get it right and you're trying to work on your light and sometimes it requires a little bit of editing because for some reason the background looks gray when it was white. And it, it is a bit tricky, but you get used to it. There's ways to learn it that aren't really that difficult. And it's as important as 
you know, your pricing, your branding, your business plan, really, because that's the base to everything. That's what's going to sell your products online or offline. So it's really important. I mean, the difference between those two slides is so clear. I mean, the first one, you're like, nope, I'm not, you know, I don't know what I'm getting, really. It's like, how is this really going to look like? Whereas this one really feel like I, I can grab almost the image and it would look exactly the same in my hand. Um, and that's really what you want to want you want to get really from your shoppers or from retailers. Yeah, it's a value marker. You know, um, that's what, one of the things we talk about in, in one of my my class on pricing value markers. You know, the, the, the first slides, you know, those bad slides, the terrible picture of the ring that I took and so on. It doesn't look like those rings are worth the amount of money. You know, almost yeah. it doesn't matter what the price is, what your wholesale price is. It doesn't look like it's worth it. Whereas yeah. these ones, th that looks like, you know, I could sell that for a good amount of money. As a retailer, I, you know, I look at that and think, well, I could probably, you know, make a decent amount on that. And and yeah. so it, it's, it, it really all kind of, um, one thing leads on to another, but it's, it is really important, that visual thing. And as you say, it is hard, but it's absolutely worth persevering with. And keep it simple. Yeah. You know, if you, you don't have a, a model and you don't have a wedding dress and you don't have like fancy lights don't try for that just now just go for white box that will that will still get you somewhere it'll get you started and those yeah. other things come in as as you go along so that's that's images um so shall we go on to step three step three yeah oh this is step three. four but it's step three guys <laughs> oh, step three, yeah. <laughs> oh <isn't> it? <laughs> yeah it's step three i just can't count um, so this is where we start to talk about um, the writing in your catalogue. Now, I could talk for like two hours about this without drawing breath. I won't do that to you. Um, let, we're, we're just going to take a little tiny example of it just now. But the, the key thing here is in your writing in your catalogue is to always come back to why should the buyer care about this? Why should the buyer listen to me when I'm writing here? Why, you know, what's what's in it for them? So if we skip on to this next one, this is a little example of not so good uh, catalog writing. It's, it's, it's pretty common though. This is a very common style. So I won't read it because it's impossible to like read with, you know, I will run out of breath. Um, <laughs> but you can, I'll let you kind of glance through it as I'm talking. So this is something that a lot of artists will put at the front of their catalog. Um, it's quite common if they've come up through art school because it's in a quite art schooly style or if they're yeah. used to doing exhibitions and so on. So it's it's full of, um, it's in the third person for one thing, you know, she's talking about herself in the third person. We've got a bunch of dates that no one cares about. I, you know, I, I've just met you, Ella. I don't care when you went to art school, you know, that's of zero interest to me. Um, it talks about some details, you know, exhibitions that she's done, uh, awards that she's won. And then she quotes, you know, she kind of, um, uh, talks about the, the other artists that inspire her. Again, that's just making me feel dumb because I don't know who these people are. <laughs> so it's just like a kind of no, 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 no happening. Instead of what you want in your writing in a catalogue is for the buyer to read it and go, yes, 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 yes. So yeah. this is, a, you know, this is a kind of example of what not to do. Um, really what you want to do is turn all this, this around. So put it in the first person, talk about, instead of saying, you know, Ella does this, or I, you know, make it, I do this. I'm a mixed media artist. I, you know, I trained at the Edinburgh College of Art. That, that detail itself may not be that interesting. You may not want to lead with that. Um, think about what's in it for the retailer. What we want to know is what you make and, and, and really, you know, why that's of interest to me, why you're getting in touch with me about it. So, um, mm -hmm. for example, um, I talk about in, in my What Retailers Want class, this idea of a snappy description, which is what absolutely what could go here instead of all this kind of word diarrhea. So a snappy description would be something like, <laughs> would be something like, you know, if you make jewellery, you might say, I make uh, fine silver jewellery uh, that's inspired by the textures of the natural world. Bang, snappy description. Yeah. Uh, or if you make ceramics, you might say, I make uh, stoneware cups and bowls for people who like a shot of colour with their breakfast in the morning. You know, if you make colourful bowls. Um, it's that kind of thing. So it's a one sentence type of summing up that could start off this little welcome note um, 
and address the retailer directly and say, look, here's what I make in like almost in sort of 10 words or less. Because when you tell me that type of snappy description, I know straight away whether that's my kind of customer, whether my yeah. customer cares about the textures of the natural natural world in her jewellery or cares about colourful bowls and, and cups. So when you tell me that straight away, instead of getting into all these details that you know, probably only your mum cares about this type of stuff, you know, these really obscure details about your life. And that's not to say this isn't important. I don't mean to say that, you know, that the facts of your life and the story of how you got to where you are now doesn't matter. But there's other ways and other places to talk about that, perhaps in a behind the scenes page where you show yourself at work, you know, in your studio or, and, and you talk a little bit about your inspiration, that's where that type of stuff belongs. So I don't want you to think that, you know, that doesn't matter. Retailers don't care. We do care. We just need to know a little bit about, you know, about what you're offering first. So that's what not to do. Um, and yeah, again, I could talk about that for hours, but I won't. Let's move on. <laughs> so, so we go on to the real step four. The real step four, yeah. Step four, yeah. Uh, so this is about... Um, uh, this next thing is about something that scares people with who are just new to, to catalogs, how to make it look professional. How do I make it look, you know, sometimes people have never designed a catalog before. I mean, who has? No one has really, unless, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you might have designed um, reports at school or other types of document. And then you look at these glossy things that come through the post or you look at other artists' um, wholesale catalogs and go, I, how do I? how do I compete with that? How do I make it look that professional yeah. and that beautiful? And, uh, you know, the, there are kind of two strands to that. The first is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't, you know, you, the design of your catalogue can be super simple and super, super effective. So don't think that in order for it to work, in order for your catalogue to be really persuasive to retailers, it has to be some incredibly fancy, fancy thing. It doesn't. Simple always works. The second thing is, that you can um one uh, one cool little way that you can start to build up a palette for your uh, for your catalog so this is for the design you know the overall design of your catalog the types of colors that you use in it the um you know the if you use little banners or little you know just the kind of visual style of your catalog how that starts to develop one cool way to do that is to start with your photographs or even start with the colors that are in your products so this is an example of uh, of taking your color palette from your photos. So this this picture here is by Holly Booth. She is um, we're going to talk a little bit later about um, create your own catalog, but she's a, a really good product photographer that I teamed up with because she knows this stuff. And she took this picture for one of her clients. And uh, one of the things that you can do is grab some uh, some colors out of your uh, your product photos or out of your your actual product and use that so if we skip on I'll show you what I mean so you can use this thing called a color picker tool this is something that's free it's online you just google you know color picker tool or or um, color uh, color from image something like that it's really easy and that will give you a, a service where you can upload one of your product photos and then you can hover over different parts of it and grab the hex codes for those specific, specific colors. So you can see here, I've got that really dark navy blue. I've grabbed that uh, and, you know, in my example, I could use that, that particular blue for the headlines. I've also grabbed an orange that, uh, you know, that orange at the top there, that particular hex code is that, that see that weird number up there that begins with a hashtag. That's the, <laughs> the, the code that identifies that color. So if you put, like if I went into Photoshop or if I went into Canva and I put that code in that, you know, F78900, I, I would get that precise color of orange. And if you did that on your computer, you would get exactly the same color. So it's a way of identifying colors uh, through color codes. Language. Yeah, color light, exactly, yeah. So mm -hmm. you can use one of these tools to grab those codes out of, and, and this is quite fun, you know, you can start to play around with, you know, have, have a little play time with it. Grab those codes out and uh, after a while, if say for example, you took 
I don't know, five, six, seven lifestyle shots or even white box shots, and you did that, after a while, you'd probably start to see common themes. And you would start to see, you know, a, a shade of, a particular shade of blue runs through all these pictures or a particular shade of gray or green or whatever it might be. You can grab those codes and use them for different parts of your design. So, you know, you can use a, a particular shade for your footers, for your banners. If you're going to do little badges on some of your products that say new or bestseller or back in stock, you know, you can grab that code. So it's kind of naturally evolving from what's already there. Instead of you, you know, going off into a room and going, oh, I must come up with a color palette. Oh, well, think, <laughs> think, you know, and having to invent that from scratch, use what you've already got. And a lot of the time, this is fun for creative people often because you are so highly visual. You know, all, I, I did this thing in my Facebook group a few weeks ago where I said, okay, here's a burning question. If you could only sell your work using only pictures or only words, which would you choose? And like, everyone chose pictures because creative people are often very highly visual. So this can be really enjoyable and it can be a way to start to feel really good about your design decisions, even if you're a beginner. You know, you don't have to, you know, hire some expert to, to um, give you a color palette. You've probably got something in there already, something that you can use. And that's the kind of simple technique that, that does help to give that professional, polished, established look to a catalogue. Yeah. Yeah. So, any does that all sound good? I, I mean, you're so good at branding, uh, De Deborah. So this is oh, this is my favorite. I love this step because that's something that I recommend people do when they brand their shop all together, or even just create their logo. Because if you're trying to create a color palette from scratch, it's fun for the first couple of hours, and then you you just end up you forgot what you were when you began, and you change that green shade so many times you can't even remember what it was like. So usually I actually, that's actually how I work. Um, and I do this for a living. I always use a color picker tool. And what I do is I usually come out with a mood board, which in this case would actually be your lifestyle shots and then grab the colors from that. Because what happens is that you also kind of grab the emotions as, as you grab the colors from a picture. And again, that's what's selling. So when you're grabbing the orange, you know, it's really, I don't know, it's really energetic. There's something vibrant about it. It's a very different vibe than if everything was, you know, beige or a light blue. So you, when you have those elements popping in your pictures and you use them for your headlines, your little, as you were saying, your little, like, whatever they're called, sticker things or, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it really, really works. And it really makes it cohesive and it works really it just makes it look professional and it's and it's fun and it's easy and it's free as well because all those tools are free and and you really don't need to pay for any premium tool for that so yeah i love that i love that tip and i think it's um something that they can apply to so many other areas as well of their branding and the business yeah. Uh, but yeah guys don't forget that we are live and if you want to ask questions or if you want name of tools or anything pop a comment under the video and I think they're showing up as we're chatting and then we can just show it on screen and answer it as we go. So if you have any questions, um, this is a great time to do it. But if not, we might move on to the step number five. Five of the, yes. Yeah, there we go. So this is one of my secret weapons and there are a whole stack of these um that I, again that i could talk about i just picked this one because it's simple it's kind of maybe a little bit scary though for new people people who haven't sold to shops before but it, it's i think often uh, people underestimate how effective it is so this this particular secret weapon is testimonials and this is something that um uh, well let's just talk about what a testimonial is first off this is a nice quote from someone who has actually bought your stuff who has um, not just thought about it, who's actually handed over cold hard cash for your product and had a good experience with it. So uh, it's just a brief, you know, sentence, maybe two sentences at most, um, that uh, from, you know, from a real person. And one of the reasons that's so effective in a catalogue, why it's worth, you know, putting some time into this, is because um, it's social proof. Humans are obviously social creatures um, and we are, highly influenced, often more highly influenced than we're aware by what other people around us are doing and thinking. So if you have your catalogue, you know, when I'm flicking through your catalogue, 
I am I'm used to hearing your voice. You're you're saying hello. You're saying here's this. Here's my blue collection. Here's you know here's how to order. Here's my behind the scenes page. All of that. It, I'm used to your voice. If you use a testimonial, either from a, a current stockist, so a, a store that's already selling your stuff, or from a, just an ordinary customer who's bought it and loved it, then all of a sudden I'm getting someone else's voice. Now, I know that you want you want me to buy your stuff. I know that's what you want. But it, when you include someone else's words, then they've got no skin in the game. You know, they're not they're not angling for anything. Um, so to have that that other voice, it kind of freshens things up. Uh, it adds a bit of variety, adds some drama, but also adds some persuasion, you know, persuasion persuasion it, um, because you know th this for example here if someone used th this quote my quote in in their catalog then you know I've got no particular reason to you know for someone to buy Ella's work I just think it's good so it, it's that social proof it, um, it's a kind of a, a it's a powerful technique there are some things that are important though to make your testimonials um, really effective so the first is to not overuse them. Don't have them on every single page. The second is to make them short. Sometimes artists, um, like the, they make it two paragraphs and it's just like, no one's gonna read that. I assume yeah. that the retailer is skimming. You know, we're absolute professional skimmers because we get a ton of submissions, you know, on a daily basis, really. And uh, we, we get it down to a fine art where we can just flip through and we're, we're going really fast but we're absolutely zooming in on what's important so if you put too many words in um, I'm not necessarily going to catch the, the important ones so keep it you know edit it down to just you know a really brief and make it big sometimes it's quite a good idea to put uh, quotes to put testimonials in a different font so you might have a particular font maybe a slightly fancier font um, from everything else that kind of marks up the fact that it's someone else talking now it's not you someone else is speaking. So that can be quite a good idea. And you can also pull bits out, like you see how I've made fast and easy, I've made it orange. You can highlight the the really important bits, the bits that you really want the retailer to sort of um, latch onto. And then down the bottom here, you can see I've attributed this quote. So it's important to actually put the per give the person's name. I mean, you can even go further and in include a little photograph of the person giving the quote, if you like. That's a good idea on websites. Um, it's something that you can do in catalogues. It's not as crucial, um, but it is important to have the, the person's name. So it's, and not just have like C or, you know, just have or have nothing at all give their full name, obviously ask them for permission. Um, and if it's a retailer, then the name of their shop is a good idea. So it can be kind of scary asking for testimonials, but it can also, if you get over that initial fear, it can actually be kind of lovely too. And it's really easy and simple um, to, to ask. I've got a script for this and create your own catalog where, you know, it, it's, you're essentially just getting in touch and saying, hi, it's me. And, you know, I, you're, you're saying, I, I know that you're you like my stuff would you mind just saying a few nice things about it? it's just and a lot of the time people will go god yeah absolutely i you know I, and occasionally that will actually generate another order because people go oh yeah i, re I remember how much i love your stuff you know <laughs> it can actually have that yeah. effect so it's kind of good all round and in terms of where to use testimonials um, in your catalogue, as I say, you don't want them on every page, but one near the beginning. So you might on your very first page of your catalogue, you know, you'd have the cover and then the inside page, probably have your welcome note there. And then underneath it, there's that's often a good place for a testimonial. And uh, again, there might be some other ones, you know, if you get fancy, you can... Uh, you, and you've got lovely lifestyle shots, you can put a testimonial right across the middle. That sometimes looks amazing. But the other good place is at the end. So at, uh, right at the back of your catalogue, I recommend that you have this thing called a how to order page, which is exactly what it sounds like. But underneath that, you know, the, the bit how to actually get this stuff on your shelves, underneath there can be another good place for a testimonial because you're, again, it's someone else is talking. So you're kind of saying, you don't just have to trust me, listen to this person who... You know, who really thinks what I do is good. It increases that feeling of safety. And, uh, you know, I almost think you can't, you can't think about that safety aspect too much. Um, the more that's kind of uh, built into your catalogue, the more that just becomes a natural part of what you do, um, the better your catalogue is going to be. So, so that's one of my secret weapons. Um, it's a good one. 
I think it's really effective testimony. Oh, yes, yeah. social proof works. Cool. 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 And then, as you were saying, as long as you get past the fear of actually asking for a testimonial, then yeah, it's just, it's actually easy. People are happy to give it to you. And I've seen a few people as well do something really smart, which is if you got a review from someone in the past, someone that said, oh, thank you so much. Um, I love this product because of that, or, you know, the packaging was wonderful or something like that. You can actually email that person back and you just, you, you, you use exactly what that person said, but you reword it uh, in a testimonial way and say, look, I've just reworded what you've said. And I was wondering if you would let me use it in my catalog, you know, as a testimonial. And usually people are like, well, yeah, because that's actually what I said. You just, yeah. you know, you just reworded it a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So, and that works perfectly fine. And you save people time as well because they don't have to write it themselves. They just have to say, yes, cool. Um, so that's something that I know um, work a lot for online review and I'm sure it would work fine as well for catalogs. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely a, a good one to just a good habit to get into. If you do it at the time, like you say, um, you know, do it at that moment when you've just maybe received a nice email or even if someone said something to you in person or on the phone, then if you kind of come back to them quite quickly and say, would, would it be okay, that lovely, I can't stop thinking about that lovely thing you said, would it be okay for me to use it? Then yeah. that's when they're likely to say, oh, say absolutely. You know, it's, it's because yeah. you're they're still feeling that they're still that emotion is still there if you come back to them like two years later then they might have slightly forgotten who you are so yeah. getting into that habit of, of collecting testimonials you can even do it on if you have a facebook page or um you know social media type things you can even do it then you're probably you know you want you don't want to do like a screenshot or anything like that in a catalog make it look nice and, and cohesive with your overall look but um yeah yeah it's, it's a good habit definitely Mm -hmm. All right. So five steps. Yeah, question. five steps. These were such great tips. Um, <laughs> my favorite is definitely the color picker one because I just I'm just a little bit of a branding graphic design nerd. Um, but seriously, all of these steps all makes perfect sense, and I'm hoping that everyone got a lot out of it. Um, and say so you've got your class, create your own catalog. That's open today, actually. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it as well while you're here so that if people have questions, they can um, ask you and you can um, run us through, you know, what the class is about and what the training is. Sure. So um, so this class is called Create Your Own Catalogue. It's um, it, it, enrollment has just opened today. It's not I don't do this is the first time enrollment has been open for a year. So it's not something that I do all the time. Um, that's partly because I'm so involved in it. And we'll get to that in a sec in terms of, you know, actual input, personalized feedback. Um, but yeah, so it's a class. It's called Create Your Own Catalogue. It is a class which tells you teaches you how to build a really persuasive wholesale catalogue, one that actually gets retailers excited about giving you money, that that yeah. really pushes all our buttons, makes us feel completely safe, makes us feel like you're a, you're a discovery, like you're a, you're the gem that we've been looking for. You know, out of all these the mountain of submissions that we receive, you're the, yours is special and mm -hmm. that that you should, you know, that you end up in the yes pile as opposed to the, oh, maybe we'll think about that one day pile. That's the idea. So if we skip on to, is it the next slide, I think, um, maybe, yeah. yeah. So this is, um, I, I'm your teacher for the class overall, um, and I uh, uh, kind of guide you through every single part of it, but there's three big strands in the class. The first is copywriting and structure. So that's where, uh, and that's where I, I'm, that's my field. So that's where I tell you what to say in your catalog and how to say it and how to lay it all out. Um, we go through that in really, great depth um, so that we take care of all those questions. And we cover things like, you know, that like secret weapons we were talking about, you know, that one, but also eight other secret weapons, um, things like merchandising, starter packs, um, uh, having uh, credentials on, at the beginning, a whole stack of things that, that really spring from my experience, of, you know, eight years of receiving hundreds of wholesale catalogs every year. Um, I, you, you, you start to see the things that work and the clever things and the things that make you go, oh, gosh, right, okay, yeah, I'm paying attention to you. So that, yeah. that's really what, you know, my part of the class is, is, that's where that comes from. So the other two parts are product photography and design. And the, the idea is that um, 
the, the traditional way of getting a catalogue made is so time consuming and expensive. You know, either you have to go and like Google for like a month and try and find all these little bits and pieces of information, something about how to take pictures, something about colour palettes, something about how to pair fonts, you know, how to pick two fonts that look nice together. <laughs> all those little bits of information and put it all together yourself and then somehow, you know, apply all that to wholesale. That's the first way of doing things. The second way of doing things is just hiring people to do all that for you. Um, a product photographer and a copywriter and uh, a designer. So uh, th those I've talked about the first uh, step, which is kind of my wheelhouse. The other two are not, you know, I take the worst product pictures ever. I just, <laughs> I'm terrible. I want, and, I, and I completely lose patience as well. And I like, no. Um, so I teamed up with two people who are experts in this field. Um, uh, Holly Booth, who is a product uh, photographer who specializes in creative businesses. So she doesn't take pictures of like, you know, mobile phones and iPads and, you know, bottles of beer. She takes pictures of jewelry, handmade jewelry, um, stationery, uh, prints, um, uh, bath and body products, you know, all types of creative handmade products. That's her thing. She's got a particular knack for making them look not just beautiful, but um, like alive. She's got a, she's just, that's just her thing. She really knows how to, to bring these types of products to life. So I teamed up with her and she has helped me write the, the product photography part of the class. So it's, um, that's where we take you right back to, you know, what does your camera, what are all these camera settings? How, how to, what your actual, you know, your, um, uh, exposure things should be on, what kind of lighting you need. We go through lighting setups, we go through styling, you know, we, there's a huge list. She gave me an enormous list of props because of course she's got a whole studio with all this stuff in, like ready and yeah. waiting. Um, and she's, you know, all these different things that she's used, stamps, you know, fur, moss, all these things that, you know, sweeties, things that, that you might not think of, but because she's doing this all the time, it's at, you know, at the tip of her um, tongue. So that's, she teamed, uh, we teamed up and did the, the product uh, photography part of the class. So we teach you how to take your own really good product photos, both white box and lifestyle. And uh, for the third part, part of the class, I work with Kim Lawler, who's an expert in uh, the same field, really, but for websites and graphic design. So, and she's actually um, a jewellery maker herself. You might have heard of her. Uh, her brand is called Finest Imaginary. She makes all these gorgeous um, acrylic necklaces and things. That she's been featured in Vogue, and she's stopped around the world. So, as well as being a, you know, having that design eye, she's actually a, you know, a maker as well. Um, and she uh, and I worked on the the third strand of the class which is how to make your catalogue look nice how to make it not just look nice but feel nice so how to do things like choosing fonts um you know what how how to organize your uh, catalog like which page should go after which you know all of that kind of thing which products should go together how many products to put on a page really basic stuff like that that, that can just stop you feeling like you can do stuff, like feeling like it's something that you can manage. So uh, altogether, if the three of us, you know, if you were to hire us to work on your catalogue, we, we sat down and we added up all our early rates and it would cost more than $6,000 US. So, you know, who's who's got that kind of money? My clients, the students that I work with, that that's just not doable until you're at a certain stage and you've got a certain number of stockists that's just not you can't just you know throw six grand around so the idea was to make it possible to make to make a catalog of a very high quality but without having to flash that amount of money on it or to or or have to go no i have to wait it's going to take me a year but i'll save it up you know we wanted to make it possible for you to get started now not just because it's great to get started now, but because if you learn this stuff, then when you're at the point when you are, say, you know, five or six years further down the line or however long it might be, and you are at the point of hiring people to do these things for you, you will understand it. You know, it's not going to be new to you. So that was kind of the idea. And then on the, if we go to the next slide, I think. Yeah, just before, I, think I just like to say as well, it's also like to get a system where, you know, you can have this $6,000 three times a year because there's, you know, your Christmas catalogue and then you need another product shop for, you know, Easter or Mother's Day or I don't know, whichever. But, you know, and then it just adds up to this thing that's just, it's just unrealistic to think that you can afford this because there's really money should be spent on other areas of your business when you're just growing. So 
I love that you're starting to clap this class because it's a system that you can go in and, you know, you could get ready for Christmas now, but then you could also in six months go, okay, I need to go and, and redo my catalog a little bit. And you can just go back to a few lessons and just adjust what you need or, you know, update your own catalog without having to call your photographer and say, oh, I've got a new product. Can you, you know, please do it. You know how to do it yourself. So it's it's really, um, it's, it's, it's really great. All right, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Here we go. So this is just a quick run of what a rundown of what's in there. Um, so it, I, I've designed this is I don't think anyone else is doing this. I, I have ne have never found a, a, you can buy catalog templates in other places, but I've never found one. It's one of the reasons why I made the class. I've never found one that's actually customized for indie retailers. And so I, what I've done is put all of the ideas in the class. Things like the welcome note, the uh, how to order page, the behind the scenes page, all those different types of product page, um, testimonial pages, all that stuff. I've put them into three digital catalog templates so that all you have to do is drop in your text and your uh, photographs. You know, and, and you've got a ready-made catalogue. So Kim and I worked together. She made it look gorgeous. I told her how to lay it out. Um, and it's in InDesign. So uh, she has made these, you'll see in the list there, screencasts where she tells you literally what to do in InDesign. Now, InDesign, as uh, you probably know, is Adobe software. Um, you can sign up to get a free trial for seven days. So, you know, it's not like you have to go buy this, all the software. Yeah, um, you can just sign up for the trial, get all your stuff ready. You know, you're like, okay, I'm ready to do this now. And then she will tell you exactly how to customize these InDesign templates. So they're all like the structure of it is all there ready and waiting. And she'll say, okay, so so watch this and I'll tell you how to change the font. Or watch this and I'll show you how to, you know, move a photograph down a little bit. And it's, it's as kind of nitty gritty as that. Um, and these aren't long screencasts because she's so good at what she does. And because it actually InDesign is meant for this type of um, document, yeah, it's, it's designed specifically for this type of thing. It, you know, these screencasts are only about five, six minutes each. So it's, it's simply a case of watching what she does, does on her screen and then pausing it. You do the same on yours. And, and back and forth until you've got a finished catalog. And uh, on the photography side, Holly has done exactly the same thing in terms of editing photos, and that's in Lightroom. Again, uh, you can get a free trial of that um, from Adobe, um, and she's, she'll tell you how to um, professionally edit your pictures, you know, how to lighten things, how to um, correct the angle of things, all that type of stuff that you just wish someone would tell you. Because I, I mean, we've spent hours and hours and hours here, you know, when we used to do our own product photos, just going, oh, how, how do we make it not look yellow? How do you know that type of thing? It just drives you bonkers. And uh, Holly has just sat down and gone, OK, this is how you do it. Right, don't worry, just follow what I do. So those are the screencast part of the class. You also get these four chapters. Um, you can read them or you can listen to them. I recorded the whole thing. So it's kind of like a high quality podcast. Each chapter is a separate track, so you can like, stick it on in the background while you're working in your studio, or you can listen on the bus or while you're driving. You can kind of absorb information that way, or you can read them if you want to. Um, and the, the other two major things in the class are the 90 days of email support. So uh, this is why I don't run this class all the, all the, all the time kind of just do it once a year because it's really high touch you know I, I, this 90 days of personal email support for me that means that if you get stuck or if you need a second opinion or you just you know you're like okay Claire what did you mean on page 33 is it this or is it this you can just email me you know you're one email away from an answer I'll get back to you within 24 hours and you've got that for three months um, one quick thing on that actually is um, last time when I ran the class, a lot of people were like, uh, oh, okay, my email support, that's great, but I'm, I'm going to be really busy in the run up to Christmas or I'm having a baby and I'm not going to dive into the class until the new year. And, you know, what about my email support? And that is not an issue because you can pause it. So, you know, if, you, if you're if you not going to work on the class right now, you're going to wait till January, February, whenever, you can just let me know. We'll, we'll hit the pause button and you can pick it up when, you know, you've got that three months when you're ready for it. And the last part is that you get a 30 minute one-to-one -one call with me. This is where we get on the phone or we get on Skype and we just talk about you, what you need. You know, you get a chance to sort of borrow my brain for a little bit. 
and I will review your catalogue. Um, I'll uh, answer any questions that you have. Uh, you know, we, we can look at things really specifically and you can say, do you think it should be this or should it be this? And we've got, we'll go through those options. I'll give you a to-do list, whatever you need, really. It's, um, it's kind of half an hour to get an indie retailer's eyes on your catalogue before it goes out to the indie retailers that you actually want to impress, you know, because you don't need to try and impress me. I'm, I already think you're amazing. Um, but it, it's kind of that that sort of um, target market. I'm your, I'm your customer. I'm an indie retailer, you know, a real life breathing example of your customer. So it's a chance to just get your stuff in front of uh, someone who knows about this. Like, it's really hard to find um, unless you have a, an indie retailer in your family or someone that you know so yeah so that's the 30 minute one-to-one -one call and it's really fun I totally love de doing these calls that's a, so it's a quick rundown of the class and in terms of payment it's one payment of 297 this is US dollars or four monthly payments of 87 so that breaks it up you you know kind of just uh, you can pay in installments if that's better so yeah so that's that's create your own catalogue yeah, that's amazing. And I've got a couple of extra bonuses for you guys as well. Um, I'm really excited about the 30 minute one one call with Claire because I think that's worth the entire the, the investment in the class just for that because getting your eyes on the catalogue and having your feedback saying, you know, maybe change that or that's just so precious and that makes you feel so much more comfortable and confident when it actually is time to reach out to people and send it because you know, you're like, well, I know Claire loves it, so it's got to be good. And then, you know, you just feel great sending it out. And that's, um, and with all the templates and all the screencasts and all this, I've had, I've had, I've taken the class, guys, and I've had a look at everything. And I'm a designer and I was really impressed. It's really, really good stuff. I've learned a few things. So you're going to learn so much. It's, um, it's, it's really amazing. So let me show you. I've got a couple of bonuses as well. So if you um, sign up for the class um, using, actually, let me show that on the screen, um, using this link here, um, you also get access to my uh, Design Your Own Brand Kit workshop. So that's because I didn't want to bombard you with, you know, bonuses that are not relevant to the actual class. And I really want to give you stuff that's going to help you make even more out of it. Um, and so this is a workshop that's my favorite workshop. That's the workshop I get the best feedback from, from sorry. And it's really to help you um, redesign your brand a little bit if you feel like you need a refresh or even just design it from scratch if you're not happy with the way your brand look at the moment. And so it's really, um, the, you really get um, practical with me and I show you behind the screen with some free, super easy tool, even if you're not a designer at all, uh, with some quick tips how to actually get, you know, from an inspiration board to a mood board. Uh, and then we go into the color palette, a little bit like we talked about with Claire before with the color picker, so that you have a full color palette for your brand. Um, I help you design your logo, pick your fonts and your typography so that reflects your brand. And so by the end of the workshop, um, you've got where you can see, maybe it's a little bit small for you to see it on the screen at the moment, but uh, you get your your own, you know, brand kit, your style guide. So you have this really one page PDF where, you know, this is my logo, my small, my big version. These are my colors, these are my fonts um, so that you can work from that for your catalog and also so that you have it for anything else in your business, really. Uh, and it's a really fun class as well because um, it's quite creative. Like it's not, you know, it's not, there's no math, there's no copywriting. It's all about just getting uh, visual and playing with images. So it's um, it's quite fun. And then um, the second bonus, and I'm even more excited about this one, is what I call an implementation workshop. So if you've taken my workshop bef uh, before, you know that I'm the checklist girl. I love a good plan. I love deadline. Um, <laughs> that's something that I love to do for my business and that most people actually hate. So that's great, guys, because we can work together. So what I want to do is get all of you to sign up uh, through that link, tizitco slash catalog. And uh, it's going to be probably a smaller group than what we usually are. So we'll get really one one time on screen where you get to explain to me where you're at with your business, what you're up to, and what's your goal with this class. Do you want to be ready for Christmas? Is uh, Christmas too much of a rush and maybe you need to do it for later? And we'll have a look at, you know, what you have on your plate at the moment and reprioritize everything so that you can really um, finish the workshop having a proper plan of, you know, this is what I'm doing for the next few months and I know when I need to do what and by when. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm really excited about that because I know taking on a class sometimes is a bit, I've taken many classes myself. I think online courses are 
genius. And sometimes I wish I didn't go to uni and instead I just did online classes. <laughs> but, you know, it didn't exist back, to, back in the day. But I've taken classes myself and, and uh, the biggest challenge usually is making room for it. Um, when you already have stuff on. And so I really want to help you do that so that it's doable, it's possible, and, and ultimately I want you to, you know, sell some stuff so that you can make a living um, doing what you love. So, um, so yeah, so to get that, guys, to get all of Claire's um, amazing content and to get the two bonuses, uh, you can go to tz.co slash catalog, and that's the link that's uh, displayed at the bottom of the screen. And... Um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, if you guys have any questions, it's actually, let me go back to just the two. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and um, if you have any question, you guys have been really quiet today, maybe because we've delivered such clear content. You don't actually have any questions, but I can see um, a few of you still here with us. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us because we're really happy to hang out for a little bit and help you with anything. And also, if you're catching the replay, uh, please feel free to leave a comment anyway because we still get them and we get notification and we'll be able to um, get back to you in, you know, less than a day for sure, depending if you're, if you're sleeping or not. <laughs> and um, so you can absolutely leave a comment even if it's not live and you're watching the replay and we'll make sure to um, get back to you. And if you have any questions, that's, um, that's absolutely fine. No question is too silly. <laughs> Claire, thank you so much for showing up today. I know it's really late where you are. It's actually really early where I am, and it's really late yeah. where you are, which is really weird. We're in opposite sides of the planet. I suppose that's going to happen. But I feel worse for you. I think getting up early is worse. Yeah, but I get up early really like every day. I love to get up early because I can get stuff done before the world gets up, and I feel like I've got these two, three hours of pure silence where, you know, everyone's still sleeping and there's not much happening, and... Yeah, my brain turns off after 9 p.m. anyway, so I kind of have to. <laughs> I can't work at night. Yeah, you're right, yeah. I can see why you're so good at the implementation now. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. I make time for stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we've got a question here from Sally. I'll just put it on screen. Should the catalog show all products or should all products just be on the line sheets only? Okay, so uh, this is an excellent question. Um, first off, let's just clarify what we mean by catalogue and line sheet. These two terms are often used interchangeably, like they're the same thing. And um, technically speaking, they are slightly different things. Um, a line sheet is kind of like a cheat sheet version of your full catalogue. So it's a, a, a piece of paper or a couple of pages inside your larger document. Um, where you just do white box shots. So we don't do any lifestyle. It's not about telling a story. It's about saying, here's what's on offer and here's everything that you need to know about it. A catalogue, on the other hand, is a kind of wider thing, a, lot, a bigger document that gives a more global view of what you do in the way that we've talked about tonight. And it does do that storytelling. It kind of gets, it tells the retailer not just how to buy, but why they should buy. So, um, to go back to Sally's question, should the catalog show all products or should they just be on the line sheet? So if you, um, it slightly depends on format. If you have a printed catalog, then it's a good idea to, of course, basically the answer, the most simple answer is all the products should be in both. But there's a slight variation on that, which is if your catalog is printed, you may not want your prices to go in, inside that catalog because if they change, then you're stuck with a whole bunch of catalogs you can't use. So you may not want to actually put your prices in and get them printed into your catalog. If that's the case, then you probably want a separate line sheet that's got your prices on and that can just slot inside your, uh, your larger catalog. Um, and that way, if your prices do change, then all you need to reprint is one piece of paper. You know, that's a huge money saver. That's kind of where line sheets came from. If, on the other hand, you have a digital catalog, then your uh, line sheet can actually just be a page inside your catalog. It just, you know, it's just part of this. It's all the same PDF. Um, but some of the pages, especially near the beginning, we talk about this in the class, how the beginning section of your catalog is about drawing the retailer into your world and kind of getting them to dream a little bit. And, you know, all those lifestyle pictures are doing that. And then towards the end, 
we bring them back down to earth and we say, okay, that's enough dream time. Here's <laughs> what to do to get your, you know, to get my stuff on your shelves. Let's let's talk business now. Um, yeah. And that's where uh, lifestyle, uh, sorry, that's where white box shots come in more at the end. So you may actually, instead of having a separate page, if your catalog is digital, you might just have some line sheet style pages inside your catalog. So that will be pages that are just white box that have the prices and uh, and other details underneath. Um, and that way you don't need to have like lots of attachments. You don't need a catalog, a catalog attachment, a line sheet attachment that can all be part of the same thing. So that's kind of a long way of answering Sally's question. But the, the kind of short way of answering it is that all your products that are in your wholesale collection should be in both places. Yeah. Okay, I hope this helps, Sally. Let us know if this um, was useful or not, or if there's something that we need to clarify still. Um, and I, okay, the comment is gone. Sorry, guys, this is the first time we use this new software. I change software every time I talk to you on um, on Facebook because I'm trying a few things at the moment. So, but it seems like it's working okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm really excited about your class, Claire. And I think what I really want to remind people as well is, the photography module of that um, create your own catalog class is so good that it's it's worth investing in just for that in the one-on-one -on -one time with you, just because this is something that you can reuse time and time again. I mean, photography is is one of the three key things. If you were to ask me, was pricing, you know, things like that, that really really make you stand out from the crowd. And that's true when you send out a catalog. That's true on Etsy. That's true online when you're selling on your own website. That's true on Instagram. And so as soon as you're done um, working on your photography and you've built up those skills, you really have a great asset to go on and sell your products on, you know, multiple distribution channels uh, because you have beautiful standard photography and that you can, you know, reuse and repurpose those images. You're not just going to use them for the catalog and then go like, oh, I can't use it anywhere, anywhere else. So that's really powerful because that means you can sell your shop online for Christmas as well. You can have social media posts ready um, and, you know, and you can re-implement that every time you have a new collection or if you want to change your props a little bit because you want it to suit for Father Day more than for Christmas or whatever the case might be. Um, that module on photography is, is great because these are professional tools and it's really worth investing a little bit of time rather than money, I think, when you're starting out. Um, and also, as you said, because then if you want to hire someone, then you actually know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm really excited about that. So Sally said, um, thank you. That's really helpful. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, the okay. The photography is that you, um, Holly started as an amateur herself. Um, so she, it's not like she's saying, oh, you need to have a really fancy DSLR camera. You need a super expensive Nikon, whatever. Um, I mean, all the, everything that we talk about, you could do with your smartphone. You know, you, you may not get exactly the same results as if you did have a, a DSLR, but you, the principles are exactly the same. So you could use a smartphone, you could use your point and shoot, you could use an old DSLR that you've got lying about. And things like she um, she gave me a huge list of like th just things that she actually uses because she's a professional. She knows what really works. So light bouncers, inexpensive things that you can use, you know, like supplies from the art shop backgrounds you know it's not like you need to go spend a fortune if you just know what to get then you can have all this kit under a table somewhere and just bring it out when you need it rather than going oh what you know what background how and even things like she um she's so clever she told me how to do um uh like moody lighting so it's not just like you don't always want your your lifestyle shots to be bright and you know cheerful sometimes depending on the product and your brand you might want something a little darker more romantic more moody and she she gave me a setup for that and that's all in there so she's um she just did a complete 360 you know i think it's the kind of thing that 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 she just almost wishes that she could tell her clients in a way it's the sort of thing that people come to her for because she knows it all but it's it's like it was almost it was waiting to come out because she's like oh yeah props let me tell you this so so yeah so you don't have to spend a fortune yeah, you, know, you know what you were saying when you say I'm, I'm really not patient with that stuff and i just get really frustrated i think that's the main problem with photography is that you sit down with all good intention and you go on google and there goes the google black hole where you try to figure out how to you know you type in stuff like in a white box and which one should i get and then it's like do it yourself because i, I don't want to afford the expensive material and so you know, two hours have gone by the time you figure out what you want to buy. 
um, or what you want to make yourself with, you know, cardboards and stuff like that. And then by then you're already a little bit tired and it's just kind of like, ah. Oh. And then you have to go and try to take your pictures and it doesn't work quite as the same. So you go back on Google. I think the beauty of having someone that's actually enjoyed the process like she has and put it together for you, you know, this is how you do it is so, so good because it saves you not only time and money, but also just a little bit of sanity where you go, okay, this is done. I can go back to doing the stuff I actually enjoy doing and that I'm really good at because there's nothing worse than investing a little bit of time and not quite getting there. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people do that with photography where they're like, I've spent all Saturday trying to do my stuff, but I'm still not happy with the results. And so, of course, you don't want to do it again the next Saturday, you know, because mm -hmm. life is getting in the way and you're tired and you're not motivated. So mm -hmm. I think it's really precious just for that because, you know, time is with just a limited resource and we get frustrated. And if you have someone that, that actually loves doing it, that's done all the trial and error for you, oh, yeah, I would love to have her by my side every time I want to take a nice product photo. Because <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so when we have oh. Okay. Yeah. No, she is she is awesome. She's really, yeah. That's and that's yeah. true. She just, just, her love for her subject just comes in. Yeah. Okay, well if there isn't any other um live question guys, we're gonna let you go and um let me put back on the screen the link where you can um find more information about the class. And also remember, we've got this PDF for you if you want to go back to the slides. Um, and it was at tz.co slash five steps. I'll show you this one quickly as well. I kind of like how I can swap my little thing at the bottom like this. <laughs> I feel really fancy. I'm just, there's a click of a button. It just really works. But anyway, the class, all the information uh, that we've mentioned today and even more is at tz.co slash catalog. Um, Abba says thank you. Or Abba, sorry, maybe I've totally mispronounced your name I'm very sorry my French accent came out <laughs> and um, and yeah if you have any question even if you're watching a replay again or if you know something pops in your head in an hour when you know you're doing something and you're like oh should I have asked this uh, please feel free to write a comment below the video and we'll, we'll be checking and com commenting back so um, yeah thank you so much everyone for showing up live Claire, thank you so much. I think you deserve to um, go to bed now and I deserve <laughs> another cup of coffee. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Bye.